Well, Greece has been trying to regain the Parthenon marbles for nearly 200 years. So will 2022 finally see the sculptures return to Athens? Well, Paul Cartledge is Professor of Greek Culture at the University of Cambridge, and he joins us now on the programme. Thanks very much indeed for talking to us today, Professor. So your view is that the marbles Hello. should go back to Greece. The argument from the British government is that they weren't stolen but acquired lawfully. Do they have a point? They don't because um, <laughs> there was no, um, as it were, international treaty between two existing states in the late uh, 18th, early 19th century. So we had an ambassador and we sent him, this is Lord Elgin, to the Sublime Port, which is today Constantinople, Istanbul. But there is no formal text of a document which authorised him to do what he in fact did, which was remove um, the materials that he did. And then he spent quite a bit of not only his own money, but of course state money, because he was given money as ambassador. And he managed to ship them with great difficulty, having uh, originally had great difficulty getting quite a number of them off the actual temple. His original personal motivation was to have the stones for his own uh, estate up in Elgin, up in northeast of Scotland, and it was only later when he realised that he'd need to be re recompensed that he was persuaded to um, donate them, as he saw it, to the British government, who paid him £35,000. And this is where our government comes in with the notion of legality because the state, that is the British then state, 1816, paid Elgin £35,000, which is considerable uh, sum today in millions, in order to um, partially recompense him. And that, therefore, they claimed was buying something that they then, by buying them from Elgin, owned. Well, if you think about it, the then government of Greece was actually, a, of course, an imperial external government from Turkey, Ottoman Turkey. Ottoman Turkey doesn't exist today. Would we justify the um, claim of any state which by an imperial closure, an imperial foreclosure, deemed that something was there simply by act of um, will and power? I don't think so. Mm. So the, the initial... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, to interrupt you. I was going to say that when it comes to restitution, you could look at many items in British and other museums and say they should be back in their home countries, like, as we heard in our report, meaning vases to China, for example. Well, no, that's, I think, a red herring because um, let's just uh, be specific about our particular campaign. We claim that it's unique and therefore has no um, immediate um, consequences for any other artefact among the 8 million that are in the British Museum. This is a unique case, and we're not even asking for all the Greek things in the British Museum back. It's very, very specific. Parthenon, one temple one artefact, one cultural object with immense symbolic meaning both then and, and today. There is uh, a concurrent campaign, which is part of the, um, if you like, zeitgeist, in other words, the general feeling that big museums such as the British, such as the Met in New York, do hold things which today would not be justified by any ethical consideration that they should be entitled to hold. So there is one particular group of artefacts, namely the Benin bronzes, which very blatantly were stolen by by Britain in 1897. That's got ahead of steam going. We're very glad to support them, and they indeed support us. But our case is quite separate, quite um, unique. The circumstances of the Napoleonic Wars are not the circumstances of the late 19th century when Britain grabbed the Benin bronzes. And you talked about the symbolic nature of the marble, symbolic to both sides. I mean, they're about much more than just statues, aren't they? Well, the thing that is, there, there are different sorts of things. Um, the main single type of artefact is a very, very long frieze, 160 metres long, unique in antiquity. If it depicts real human beings, which some people think, that's unique in the whole of ancient Greece. The, the temple is itself... Uh, a unique part of an entire development 
which generated the earliest form of Western-style democracy, very different from ours, but nevertheless, symbolically, there's a terrific connection between freedom and equality that democracy symbolized in ancient Athens, in the same way that in our different circumstances, for example, we don't think slavery is a good thing today. We don't think women should be deprived of the vote today. The ancients are very different from us, but there is a certain symbolic continuity between antiquity and modernity in regard to democracy. And for the Greeks, it means a hell of a lot more than it does for us. And we in Britain, we're not, by the way, alone. There are a number of other countries. Only today, Italy agreed to return a piece to the Parthenon. It actually reached the museum in Athens, I think, this very day. There's a feature in the news today. So things are happening in a way that they haven't happened um, in quite this way for quite some time, mainly because of this anti-colonialist sense that imperialist countries should not profit from their exercise of imperial power. Professor Paul Cartledge from the University of Cambridge, thanks very much indeed for talking to us today. Thank you very much for having me on your program.